Hi, I'm Brad, and this is a wafer. Not edible. In this emerging industry, there is one thing for certain, and it doesn't only apply for the actual technologies to power things, but also displays and later on, but uh, chips are very important to VR, AR, XR, MR, whatever you want to call it. And there's only so many few companies that are making interesting chip designs to plaster onto these things to go into VR headsets. Qualcomm is one of them. It's no secret that with the XR2 platform, Qualcomm has been very successful in the very early days of this standalone VR headset idea. Every headset that pretty much tailors himself as standalone for the most part is using one of those XR2 chips. And there's some news recently that show that Qualcomm may have major more successes in this XR industry thanks to Meta. A brand new news that I think is very notable and I want to touch up on in this video just happened today. At the IFA conference in Berlin, Qualcomm Technologies Incorporated and Meta Platforms Incorporated announced a multi-year broad strategic agreement to develop premium experiences that leverage custom Snapdragon XR platforms for the MetaQuest platform. Both companies will apply their engineering and product teams to deepen a technical collaboration to deliver next generation platforms and core technologies to accelerate a fully realized metaverse. Now that already seems like a big win for Meta, since Qualcomm is doing very well in the actual XR platform and a stricter, more uh, connected effort between the two companies will allow Meta to have, well, you would assume an edge over their competitors are also using pretty much the same chips and there are a lot of companies using these Snapdragon chips. But uh, Upload VR actually reached out to Qualcomm and Qualcomm told Upload VR that the chips that are basically developed together between Meta and Qualcomm won't actually be exclusive to Meta's headsets. Strange concept because there's so many companies out there that I would call somewhat competitors to Meta's platform. But if they can use every chip that Meta decides to uh, work together with Qualcomm to make and mass produce, then I'm not sure where the exclusivity comes from. This basically sounds very similar to the report I made not too long ago about the MetaQuest Pro and the Qualcomm Next Generation chip, which is basically a custom tailored XR2 where they separate the RAM um, from the SOC to get better cooling, which allows them to get better clocks. And that's pretty much probably going to be the chip that's in the Quest Pro coming out in October. But I actually was hearing a lot about this Meta Qualcomm partnership thing all the way back in February. So there's a lot of interesting things to kind of go over between this partnership and what it means for Meta and the really the landscape in general. It's overall a pretty good thing, I guess, if you're Qualcomm. One reason this may be seen as a positive for Meta is because they've had a lot of setbacks with their own custom silicon they were working on internally without Qualcomm's help. But the information actually reported earlier in April that basically all those efforts they were having to making custom silicon and they even had some early designs that they seemingly were going to use the Samsung foundries to make. All those plans were basically scrapped or just pushed back so far to the point where they're not even uh, on the table anymore. One of the products that was going to use one of their custom chips was actually going to be for the Ray-Ban Stories 2 glasses which was supposed to be coming out next year. Um, but due to all the setbacks with the chips, they were worried that was going to be pushed back even further. These glasses, by the way, are uh, also codenamed Meta Hammerhead, I've been told from my uh, very reliable sources. But yeah, they transitioned from what was called a Brasilia chip to a Qualcomm Kona type chip, basically an XR2. Um, you see a lot of reference designs of smart glasses having XR2 chips built in, and it's supposed to have like better audio and whatever. And that's still being worked on internally at Meta, but again, it's just a very simple sort of smart glasses using Qualcomm chip instead. There was also another example of Meta's failures uh, with custom silicon internally with their smartwatch project and this one was probably a bigger surprise to everyone probably within and outside the company because the device that was going to use this chip called Carson the smartwatch was in very late stage development. They were very close to getting to a release date point for that device but Again, things happen and they completely scrapped the project yet again. So we will not be seeing a Meta smartwatch anytime soon and we will definitely not be seeing a custom chip within that smartwatch anytime soon. Um, and it also sounds like if they did want to go into smartwatch territory, they might even go with Qualcomm at this point because they have become such close friends. 
So yeah, setback after setback, Meta has just not been able to reliably uh, source a custom design for a silicon chip and actually get it to a mass production or at least a state where they want to do even higher end stuff like VR. We're talking about just smart glasses and smart watches. Those don't need like the most intricate or most powerful chip designs ever. Um, so when you start scaling that up to a bigger chip that is required to drive full on VR experiences, things get even more difficult. But there's a few other things I really want to talk about for Qualcomm and VR in general because there's a lot of news going on with this company and really both companies I think is very relevant to the future and like past next year especially. Um, I don't expect any super custom chips to come out even next year from these two companies. Could be wrong, but from what I'm hearing right now, it seems mostly a slow and beginning process to get into higher ramped up uh, design features for these chips. Um, but basically all the industry sources I kind of talked to, it's basically being hinted that the main reason why Meta and Qualcomm are working together is not really that Meta's worried about like competitors such as Pico or ByteDance um, who are also using these same chips that Qualcomm is using, but both companies uh, are more worried about the competition that Apple is bringing or even Google with their own custom silicon designs. The Apple uh, headset that's supposed to be coming out next year is rumored to be using an M2 chip built into the headset, which is way more powerful than what the current XR2 chip can provide in terms of graphics and processing. Um, so it allows Apple to give a huge edge over any VR device that Meta, for example, wants to create in the high end. And you're probably going to see that right away when the Meta Quest Pro comes out and whenever Apple's headset comes out, even though there will be a, probably a big notable price tag difference, the feature set and everything will be also very apparent um, based on what's capable from the custom silicon that's Apple's packing into these headsets. So this uh, collaboration between Meta and Qualcomm is probably to better position themselves against Apple as they constantly ramp up their uh, own custom silicon designs. They have transitioned all of their products to their custom silicon, no more Intel or anything. And yeah, it just is, it's just going to keep getting bigger. And with Facebook just lagging behind with their own custom silicon, I just think this is probably what they've decided it's the best way to actually productize chips faster and uh, develop chips faster. Now, even with this collaboration, you have to think, okay, well, XR2 is still very different in terms of like scale and size to an M type series chip that Apple can use. What is Qualcomm going to do um, to compete with that even with Meta's help? Well, one thing I always wanted to bring up with my VR crowd is uh, Qualcomm actually acquired a company early last year for a ton of money. And this company was known as Nubia. And Nubia was actually founded by a bunch of former Apple SoC uh, lead designers, which it's funny how things go full circle. And um, yeah, the company was originally going, planning to uh, acquire licenses for the ARM technology to build server CPUs. And then Qualcomm saw what they were doing, saw that they could be basically transitioned to help Qualcomm actually release a competitor chip to the Apple M series chips for a bunch of different markets. Um, and it wasn't really crazy to me that maybe one day if uh, Meta or some other company wanted to help fund Qualcomm to use this new Nubia branch to build a XR version of that M1 competitor chip. Um, it just seemed like it would make sense in the long run of things. However, there's been some recent news that I wanted to bring up, and this is really just a lot of uh, silicon drama news that I wanted to bring up in one video because it's all really relevant to our industry. Um, because that Nuvia was a small company only focused on actually building, uh, again, just ARM-based uh, server CPU chips, they bought some licenses from the parent ARM company that actually pretty much designs these things and licenses to other companies like Qualcomm and Nuvia to use. Well, um, when Qualcomm acquired Nuvia, Arm recently filed a lawsuit, like this week actually, stating that they weren't allowed to acquire Nuvia's licenses because the licenses that Arm gave to Nuvia were only meant for small scale uh, situations. And they believe that because Qualcomm, and this is the quote they gave, will expand uh, Nuvia's stuff to different markets such as uh, laptops and automo automobile and even uh, AR VR devices that they're kind of cheating the arm license a little bit so they're trying to they're basically restricting the arm license from Qualcomm and do not want Qualcomm to use any designs that might have been designed before the acquisition a big drama situation and it's sort of a big blow to the big Nuvia progress that Qualcomm is hoping will be able to be used for all of their markets for higher end bigger chips um, that being said, Qualcomm do, does feel that 
their ARM licenses that they already own from um, ARM <laughs> basically could cover that Nuvia thing. So we'll see. I think they're probably going to settle at some point. Um, I, I, I doubt they're going to make such a big deal out of this and really get it to court. But it is something that was probably going to slow down all the progresses of what the Nuvia team are trying to do at Qualcomm. I think last I heard that Qualcomm said the Nuvia chip was planned or slated um, to release their first version in late next year, which, um, yeah, hopefully they reach that because even ARM themselves believes that they're going to use that Nuvia technology for AR VR devices at some point. So that's pretty much all the big things that happen with this news. Um, I think really Meta is pushing themselves to be more worried about Apple than their competitors again. I think that's probably what they have to do. Um, Meta is trying to transition very hard to a fully metaverse company, but they still are very behind in terms of the hardware and productization of all these sectors. They've been a software company for so long, and even though they dabbled with hardware and the Quest 2 has been a success, they still are nowhere near the scale for hardware that Apple is. And um, it, maybe they're worried about it, and they feel also that Qualcomm is a little worried about it, and things will be alleviated a bit um, as things go on. Now, this doesn't mean that Facebook cannot create custom chips anymore. We've seen some interesting chips come out from them, um, mostly focused to work with in, part, in unison with like a Qualcomm chip. For example, uh, they showed off some research that they made a custom 7 nanometer chip that's purely focused on rendering uh, Kodak avatars. They're, they're really realistic avatars, which you probably won't see for still many years in a consumer product. But that chip uh, working together with an, like an XR2 chip might actually be possible and something that Facebook would want to develop themselves um, because it's a smaller scale. They don't have to worry about the insane details that the engineers at Qualcomm would be able to fill in the blanks for. So yeah, that's it. Thank you everyone. Uh, and thank you to all my Patreon people. You're all awesome. I'm going to, I'm going to do cool rainbow effects with this wafer awkwardly until this video ends. Bye.